folks. Uh, let's see. De -de 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 -de. I like how this looks like a hat. Let's talk about authorization in Hasura. So let's say you have some users who want to edit some data. Let's say you have three types of users, HR, manager, and employee. Permissions are useful when you want to control who can edit what. For example, a manager can only edit their own employee's data. An HR can edit everything. Authorization rules allow you to control permissions like this. Now, the other thing to understand here is that Hasura has fine-grained access control based on user roles. Role-based, fine-grained access control. It's like a tongue twister. Fine-based, role-grained access control? Let's take a look at how this works. So when I asked my friends what characters I should use for this demo, they suggested the show The Good Place. And I actually love that show, so here we are. We have Michael as our manager. We have Chidi and Eleanor as our employees. And we have Janet as our HR. So the question is, what should each of these roles be able to do in our database? Janet as the HR can do all the things, right? So she can select, insert, update, and delete. Michael as the manager can select and update only his reportees data and he can't insert or delete any data. Chidi and Eleanor can only select their own data and they can't do much else. So let me show you how to implement this. As you may already know, you can get started with Hasura really quickly. Just click this Heroku button right here. And you can also click deploy to Heroku after that. And um, here you enter the app name and deploy app. And it's just going to like, this is a little bit sped up, but it's going to deploy in less than 30 seconds in real life. And you can view your app right now and it will take you to the Hasura console. Up here, it says secure your endpoint on the top right. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Manage app and go to settings, reveal config vars. We're going to add a secret, an admin secret right here. We're going to call it super secret demo and click add. And then now if you go back and reload the page, it's going to ask for our secret. So just enter the secret that we just set up. And now we can access the console. On the top, we have our GraphQL endpoint. This is where we can um, post our requests. We have our headers where we're currently passing our admin secret. And at the bottom, we have graphical. It's like a playground where you can test out your queries and mutations and things. So go to the data tab and we're going to add a table and it's going to be called employees. It will be starting with an ID. We'll call it a uh, UUID type and we'll generate a random one. And then we'll do name type text. And we'll also add manager ID because employees are going to have managers, which will also be employees. So they will also have UUID. Let's also set a primary key here. So ID will be our primary key. And that's basically uniquely identifies a row of a table and add the table. There we go. So the ID is going to be matched with manager ID. We're going to add a relationship and to add a relationship, we're going to add a foreign key. So this means, so our reference table will be employees also, and the manager ID will reference the ID. This means that the manager ID has to match the employee ID an existing ID in the employees table. And we have some relationships here, object relationships, array relationships suggested based on our foreign key. So we can just hit add here. One manager has many employees and array relationship. And we'll name this one manager because it will be the manager of the employees. And we hit save. There we got our first relationship set up. Let's add another table called payroll. It will have ID type UUID and we'll generate a random one again. And then let's have salary type integer. 
And let's also have employee ID because every payroll will have an employee and every employee will have a payroll and it will be unique. The employee ID will be unique. This is a one-to-one -one relationship that we're going to set up. The primary key is ID and for the one-to-one -one relationship, we'll add a foreign key in a second. So we save that, we create the table and now let's add the foreign key. So the reference table is employees because the employee ID in the payroll table will match the ID in the employees table. And we'll save that. Now, if you go to the relationships tab, we see our suggested relationship again because we have a one-to-one -one relationship. So we could add right here like we did before, or we could go to, I'll show you a different way of doing it now, which is more convenient if you have a lot of relationships. So we have these suggested relations listed here and you can just click that track all and it will track all of them and it'll save you tons of work. So go back to payroll relationships and we can see that our relationship was set up between payroll and employee. So the IDs have to match now. So in graphical now on the left, we can see all the tables we created. And now let's add some employees. Here we go. Um, let's start with Janet, our HR. Uh, we got an error because the UUID uh, is null. So let's make that nullable. So let's go to manager ID and let's say nullable true. And going back to insert row, now we can insert a row and it will just be null and it will be cool with that. And let's add Michael. And we can see that Janet and Michael were added as expected. And the UUIDs were auto-generated. Let's also add Eleanor. Because we got all our characters in our database. And the manager is also Michael's UUID right there that we added. So we added Eleanor and Chidi with the manager ID from Michael. Let's get Janet's ID right now. She's the HR and let's open a new tab with our payroll table. Let's set a salary for everybody. And that's Janet's ID that I just pasted. Let's save that. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing for all of our users, characters, super fast. I can move so fast. It's amazing. And then we went back to payroll and we can see now that all our payrolls have been added for each employee. So now in the graphical tab, we can actually see our relationships and everything. So for employees, we can get a name. We can see all of our employees. We can get the salary for each employee. We can get the manager's name. <laughs> for each employee and uh, we can see that Eleanor's manager is Michael and Chidi's manager is also Michael. Additionally, we can get the employee for the employee because what if the employee is a manager? So let's get the employee for an employee. So we can see that Michael has employees, Eleanor and Chidi and Janet does not have any employees. What else? We can look at payroll and payroll. We can get the salary. We can get the employee of a payroll. We can get the name on there. So we can see now the salaries and the employees in the payroll table. Let's go to data, payroll, permissions. Let's set up our permissions now. Let's add HR and let's insert without any checks because HR can do everything right. So we have column insert permissions without any checks right now. So we're going to save that for HR and select update and delete should have the same thing going on. So we can just go back to insert and we can just clone the same thing. So let's clone that for select for HR. We'll clone it for update for HR and we'll clone it for delete for HR. And once we save that, that saved us 
a lot of work again. That nice shortcut there. So we can see that HR now has all the permissions for all the things. And next, let's add employee. Employees can select their own data, right? So we'll say with custom check, employee ID on the payroll table equals the user ID from the session, which we pass in with the header. Um, so this ensures that whoever's checking the employee data is the employee themselves. So we save that and we're good there. Let's add a manager role. And managers can select and update their own reportees data. So we'll do a custom check. The employee of the payroll is going to have a manager ID that equals the user ID from the current session. So the current user is the manager of the employee of the payroll. <laughs> so that's what this is saying. And toggle all the columns and save permissions. So for the update permissions, it's going to be the same as the select permissions. So we'll just say with same custom check as select. There we go. That's what we want. So we save the permissions and I accidentally wrote payroll instead of payroll. So I'm going to fix that real quick by going to this SQL link on the left and we can just enter raw SQL here. So that's kind of convenient too. And let's track everything in the GraphQL API. And now, as you can see, it's plural payrolls. We can go back to graphical now and uh, fix this payroll query to be payrolls. And now we can get all our payrolls like before. Go back to data, employees and permissions. Let's just set the permissions for the employees table also. So everybody should be able to select everything just for the demo purposes. So we'll say without any checks, toggle all, save permissions, and let's just clone this to all the other ones. So clone it to update. Oh no. Clone it for the employee, for the HR, clone it for the manager, and save permissions. There we go. Now everyone can select all the employees. So in the graphical tab, we have our headers and we're going to now pass roles in our headers. So normally you would pass in a JWT token. You would say authorization for the key and in the value you would say bearer and then you would pass in a token here that your auth service provider might generate. So we, for demo purposes, we'll just, uh, first I will show you a simple version. So we'll delete our admin secret first. Delete that. And going back, we'll say X Hasura role HR X Hasura user ID and we'll get a user ID from Janet. We'll paste it in there. So the JWC token basically has this information in it. And now you can see HR can select all the payrolls. What if we say manager and get Michael's ID? Michael can only see his reportees ID, Eleanor and Chidi. What about Eleanor as an employee? What can Eleanor see? Eleanor can only see her own information. What about Chidi? What can Chidi see? I mean, theoretically, it should be just his own. Yep. How did I know that? I have amazing prediction skills. So as you can see, you can't mute do a mutation as an employee. You can only query things because we said that employees can only query things. That's how we set up the permissions. But if we go back to a manager role here now, paste in Michael's ID again. And look there again, you can see now we can run a mutation because Michael can actually update and insert data. So let's try to do that 
adding a mutation to update payrolls where the employee ID equals, let's get Eleanor's ID and we'll set her salary to 1000. And let's try to run this mutation now. We say uh, we get an error, must have a selection of subfields. So this means you just need to return something in response, but you can also just check affected rows to get rid of this error. So we'll do that. So we run it again. And here we go. We updated Eleanor's salary to 1000. Let's see if we can do the same for Chidi. My mutation. And going back to the data tab, we can actually view the payroll on each employee. So let's go do that. And Eleanor's salary is now 1000. I want to check Chidi's salary also. Yep, we got 1000 for Chidi's salary also. So we've confirmed that our mutations worked as a manager. Now we can go back to history. Um, look at our history to run our mutation from before and go back to the data tab employees and let's get Janet's ID and let's have Michael try to update Janet's salary let's see if that will work and nice try Michael but that did not work because Janet is not your reportee there we go. So now I'm going to uncheck these roles and I'm going to show you the more real world scenario where you would pass in a JWT token. So I'm adding my secret back, reloading the page, entering my secret. Here we are. We go to this website called jsonwebtoken.io to encode or decode JWTs. So it has the header payload and a secret. So for the secret, we just pass in a random string for the payload. I'm just pasting in the roles that we were passing in before. So we have allowed roles. We have the default role. And we have the user ID. So the secret has to match the secret in our settings. So let's add that real quick. I'm going to add a new key, Hasura GraphQL JWT secret and Paste this in here with the type and the key itself. And we'll add that. Going back to here, we now have a JWT string with all this information in it. So all we have to do is uncheck all this old stuff and we'll add authorization and we'll say bearer and we'll paste in the JWT string. And we are the manager. We're Michael now. Let's see what happens. We can see the payrolls for Elnor and Chidi, and that's what should happen. So that's good. So there we go. This is how you can set up authorization rules. This is just like a simple example. If you'd like to see more examples, check out the blog post that's linked in the description and have fun with it. See you next time.